Welcome, we're here at King's Cross St. Pancras Station. And today, as part of my series on starting a street food business, we're here at the Real Food Market, just behind us. Today we're going to talk about projections and I got a little ticker timer which we'll be using. It's not just a great toy, it really helps with making fairly accurate projections because the biggest problem I have and I've seen people have is like coming up with numbers that actually make sense because when you're starting out and with varying degrees of experience it can be really hard to have any imagination for the scale of the follow through so basically like my key tip i got from a lot of people actually when i was starting up was to get a ticker timer and just go to like a competitor or a stall that will be similar to the stall you'll be trading as and you just want to see how many people go walk by every day you want to go on a rainy day you want to go at lunch at the peak time which is the case at most food markets in london also maybe just before they're closing up and then you just count how many people times it by the average price of their meal and then you get the turnover so let's say 100 customers times five quid a meal that's 500 quid then you minus obviously you can see there's two people in the store maybe three that's like six pounds an hour or let's say eight pounds an hour that's london minimum living wage eight times three 32 pounds times let's say eight hours in a day i'm testing myself with the maths for simplicity's sake let's say 30 pounds times eight that's 240 pounds let's say minus let's say 100 pounds for food and then other expenses you actually aren't left of much on that roundabout estimate i just made but you get the picture and if you do that per week per season per year throughout the year obviously it's good to get an idea when's the busiest time it's always really good to keep in mind like halloween christmas easter and prepare up to that if you can get like an accurate day to day then week to week then month to month and that will create a business plan that people will read if that's investors if that's a business competition at uni which i was taking part in or be that just yourself for clarity of mind and sanity because you're going to put money into this so you don't want to risk everything you owe I'm going to go around and do a bit of espionage. This is essentially what it is. You just have to stand by the store and be patient. And the beautiful thing is, you can just be standing like this and no one is going to tell what you're doing. Done. And also another like tip I find which is really good is just talk to the street traders. Like kind of make friends. Just ask questions that shows that you're interested. And you'll get information out that could be really interesting with figures and what stalls are most popular if some stalls are just here for the one time etc i mean who's best to talk to your parents your friends or people who do it every day okay so let's do the ticket timing I'm gonna I'm gonna set this to zero. That's zero. You put it in your thumb like this and then you go click click click. Okay, so it's zero again. Let's just actually observe a stall here. It's it's actually 4.15 so it's a very quiet time. They're about to close down to be completely honest. Okay, wait, the stall here is actually busier. That's one, two, three. That guy just bought something. That woman's just buying something and she's just buying here. If you look at me pointing. Okay, so three times five. You get my gist? Trust me, you have to be quite patient. It's like meditation. But it's a great day today, but on a rainy day, it's their complete washouts and it's awful because you make almost no money. Sometimes you lose money because you have to throw food away. But, you know, just get a real feel for the figures. To be honest, in every business genre, everyone kind of gets to know each other and you become friends anyway. Where communities develop, people will try to help each other as best they can.
because at the end of the day, your category as a whole, be it Polish food, be it pizza, be it coffee, if you can help each other out, you'll just make the category stronger. Therefore, the pie for everyone will get bigger. I mean, from previous experience, I've got some really juicy information, like whole trading figures for whole festivals. And if you can kind of get that, then that can give you a real impression of what you can do. I remember last summer when I was, I was doing pizza, right? I was volunteering and trading right by Voodoo Pizza. The guy gave me his whole figures for Glastonbury. Really a lot of information actually. I'm not going to shout about it. Slash I've kind of forgot about it because I'm, I'm moving on from street food but I didn't think he knew my intention before I just came there to volunteer as part of the juice stand. So you know just ask, just talk and you get there. This guy, I'm kind of assuming he's a student because he came with ATP and asked to get as much premium hard cheese as he could for that money. And you'll see how much he gets. Not much, but <laughs> he did come and try. Legend. My favourite store here is Greenfield Farm Organic Life for their range of caffeine-free teas. If this helps you like comment, that really helps me. And off to Spitterfields for the next market. See you guys, nice one.